Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to everyone. We want to welcome you here to Faith Chapel as we come to you live from our Huntsville campus. We're so excited you're joining us this morning. We're so excited that you're joining us there on our, on our internet campus. We just want to praise the Lord today. We want to come together with you right where you're at. And we just want to worship the Lord today. We want to give him honor. We want to give him praise. We want to declare his praises in all the earth. Amen. It doesn't matter what's going on around us. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world around us. What matters this morning is that we come together to praise the Lord. And in Psalms 118 verse 24 it says, This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know where you're at. I don't know if you've been locked up in your home. I don't know if you've been able to get out in the yard or, or whatever you've been able to do. But I want to tell you, today is the day the Lord has made. And we will rejoice in it. Choose with me today, if you will, choose with me today to rejoice in this day, to rejoice in the Lord, and to rejoice in all that he's called us to do today. Amen. Amen. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you this morning. We praise you. We give you honor and glory. And we thank you, God. We thank you that you are our God. We thank you that you are moving in our lives. Father, there have been so many testimonies this week of your healing power and your work in our lives, Lord God. And, and many people have come home from the hospital, and we've seen some great things happen this week. So, Father, we just trust you. And even in the times when we haven't seen great things happen, God, we still trust you, Lord God. We still put our hope in you. We still rely on you for our peace, God. We worship you this morning. We thank you, God, for all you're doing. We ask you to move right now. Father, I ask you just to go with those and comfort those who need comfort today. I ask you to be with those who need you right now where they're at, in their home, whether at, they're at work or another place, God, wherever they are, I thank you for being with them today. I thank you, God, that we rejoice in you. We rejoice in your glory. We rejoice, Father, in your salvation. We rejoice, Father, in the joy of our salvation today. Hallelujah. We give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Hey, let's worship the Lord together today. Hallelujah. I'm 
Jesus, that where your spirit is, there is freedom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You're welcome in this place, Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, let this be our declaration that we believe in you, Jesus. Despite, Lord, what we face or what we go through, we believe in you, Father. He 
He's reaching out to make us whole. The one who put death in his place. His life is flowing through my veins. His life is flowing.
You did not despise the cross for you. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. We give you honor and praise, Lord. We worship you, Father. This morning, we declare your praises in our lives. We declare your praises in our family. We declare your praises, Father, on every side in Jesus' name. We give you honor. We give you praise. And we give you glory. Hallelujah, Father. We worship you. We magnify you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for all you're doing in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for what you're saying, for what you're doing, for what you're, you're manifesting in our lives today. You know, as we were worshiping, the Lord put this on my heart, and I just want to encourage you. I want to encourage your faith this morning. I want to encourage you to believe this morning. In Mark, in Mark 11, 24, it says, Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. It will be yours. Believe that you have received it, and it will be yours, whatever you ask in prayer. So, Father, we ask this morning for healing right now. God, we sang, you're the God of miracles. We need a miracle today, Lord God, in the earth. We need your hand in the earth today, God. We need you to move over the earth and to move over the each and every situation, Lord God. Whether it be a coronavirus or it be another situation, God, we need you in our lives today, Father. We call upon the name of the Lord today. We call upon you, Jesus, and we ask you to move in our lives. We ask you to move in our situations. We ask you, Lord God, the, for miracles in each and every life. God, I lift up each and every uh, person to you. Lord, I was just told this morning about one in our body. You know who she is, Lord God, and I ask you to lift her up and to heal her this morning, right now, in Jesus' name. All those who are listening, all those who are watching today, all those who are partaking in this worship time with us, Lord God, I ask you to touch their lives. I ask you to minister to them. I ask you to bring miracles into their lives. I ask you to set them free. I ask you, Lord God, for your healing power in every situation, in every way, Lord God. Heal our hearts, heal our minds, heal our bodies, Lord God. Heal our spirits, every part of us, Lord God. I thank you that you are our healer, and we call upon you this morning for that healing. We call upon you for that faith, Lord God. Increase our faith. Lord, cause us to believe. Cause us to believe in the one and only name whereby we must be saved, the one and only true God who heals and delivers and sets us free. We give you honor and praise. 
Hallelujah. Glory to you this morning, God. Glory to you this morning. Glory to you this morning. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you. Well, we thank you for being a part this morning. We thank you for joining us this morning here at Faith Chapel. We are, we are so ingrained with the love of God. We are so just connected to God's truth and connected to his love and connected to who he is in the earth. And we want you to be connected this morning too. If you have a prayer request, please type it in the comments there if you're watching us on Facebook, and we will pray for you. We go back, and we don't just uh, shut it down when it's all over. We continue to pray. We continue to reach out. We continue to call upon the name of the Lord all day long. So we ask you just to, to type it in there. Type your prayer request. Type what you have need of in the comments there, and we will reach out to you. We will see the kingdom of God move. We will see God move in your life, and you will see God move in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord this morning. We give you honor and praise. Well, this morning, I, I just want to encourage you that if you, uh, if you want to text to give, you can give at 84321. This is a time that we normally take in our services to receive the morning tithes and offerings. And, and right there where you're at, in the comfort of your home, you can give unto the Lord. And you just text, put in the text section right there the number that you would text, 84321. And then down in the message section, put the amount that you want to give. And then it'll take you to another page and you just look for Faith Chapel there. And as you look for Faith Chapel, just click on that, and it will lead you through. Follow the prompts, and it will lead you through the rest of the process. It's all, it only takes about a minute, if that long, to do it. And so I would encourage you to text 84321. Now, you can also mail in your tithe and offerings. We are also checking the mailbox every day. Uh, and so you can mail it to Faith Chapel at 39, uh, 3913. Pulaski Pike Northwest, Huntsville, Alabama, 35810. That's 35810. So we encourage you to give unto the Lord this morning. You know, the Bible says that he, those that give generously to him, he pressed down, he shakes it together, and he runs it over and gives back into our lives. So this morning, I want you to be blessed. I want you to be full of God's giving. I want you to be full. You know, sometimes the blessing isn't always something financial in our pocketbooks. Sometimes the blessing is healing. Sometimes the blessing is protection over our families. Sometimes the blessing is God moving and speaking in our lives and bring him freedom in areas that we've never seen before. I want you to be free. I want you to be full of the kingdom of God. I want you to be full of the blessings of God this morning. So I encourage you, text to give or mail it in. But beyond that, trust in God this morning. Believe in God this morning. Believe for your need. Believe for what you have need of this morning. Believe that God is real, that he rose from the dead on the third day, and that he came into our lives, and he is here to love us, to protect us, to guide us, and to be with us. Hallelujah. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for all those who are giving. And Lord, I ask that those who are unable to give, that you bless them so that they can bless the kingdom of God. Father, I ask that those who, who have given this morning, that you, you just minister to them, Lord God. You press it down. You shake it together. You run it over in their lives, Lord God. I thank you, Father, that you move in each and every situation. You are our provider, Lord, and you said you bless the gift and the giver. So, Father, I ask you this morning to bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. 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 Well, we're excited this morning. I'm not going to be bringing the word to you this morning. We actually have Pastor Joshua, who is my natural son and my spiritual son and, and just an awesome man of God. He's going to be bringing the word of God to you this morning. So, Pastor Joshua, will you come and bring the word? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
It is such a blessing to be with you wherever you're at right now, in your living room, in your bedroom, in your car. Uh, it's amazing that we can join together without having to be in the same location. And uh, I just want to pray for you. And before I do that, I want to say thank you to Pastor Hank for this opportunity. Um, this is such a blessing to be able to come and bring the word of the Lord. This is not something that I do lightly. Um, I know that God wants to speak to every one of us today. And so let, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I pray that your word would come forth today in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would hide me behind your cross, Father God, that it would not be I that speak, Lord, but that you would speak, Father. Lord, I pray that your exact word for every individual tuning in right now, Lord, wherever they might be, Lord, I pray that they would receive your word for their life in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for your blessings on them right now, wherever they're sitting, Father God. Lord, if they are discouraged, if they're downcast, Father God, Lord, I pray that you would lift them up, that you would encourage them, that you would strengthen them in Jesus' name. I just release the peace of heaven into your home right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Man, God is so good. And God is so good. And it's such a blessing to be here with you right now. Thank you for joining us on Facebook. Um, and it's so good to just be able to be together. Um, and this morning, we're going to be talking about the power of pause, the power of pause. And I don't want to be a hypocrite this morning, um, standing up here. This is something that God is working in me. This is something that I'm learning. And as I'm learning it, I believe that the Lord was telling me that I, this is something I needed to share. And the power of pause. And I don't know about you, but I don't enjoy a pause. I don't enjoy pausing in my life. When life takes, when things happen and a pause happens, I, that's not something that I look forward to. I like doing things, making things happen, being productive. Um, stop signs and red lights are my arch nemesis. I can't stand them. Uh, man, when I'm going, I just want to keep going. I, I can't, I do not enjoy that. Sadly, my daughter has picked up on that. And when she sees a red light, she's like, oh, dad. And I'm like, I know this red light. We just need to keep going. Um, but. But God has a plan and a purpose for every one of us when he hits pause. And we don't always like pause. And something the Lord has been speaking to me as we have all been um, dealing with the effects of COVID-19, this coronavirus, um, uh, just something that's been very clear to me that God has just been consistently speaking to me is what we see as an interruption might be a divine appointment. As we're going through life, we might have things that happen and we look at this thing and we say, man, this is an interruption. I had my plan. I had my purpose. I don't know about you, but I had some things planned out for 2020. I had some vision for 2020. I thought 2020 was going to be going a certain way and it ain't going that way. And there were things that I was expecting for 2020 and it's been like, pause. Be still. That doesn't mean that we've stopped working. That doesn't mean that nothing's been happening. In all honesty here, um, there's been a great amount of work. And I know many churches are, are in the same boat. There's been a great amount of work going forward to make sure that we can reach out. And I believe God is enabling us to reach out more than we ever have before. God is using this to actually provide platforms for us to reach more. We are using Zoom for Bible studies. We're doing all kinds of things. But in, also in the same token, in many ways, God has hit pause. And as I think about what we're doing uh, social media wise and doing different things to reach out to people, I got to say, and she, she ain't going to appreciate this, but I got to give some honor to Catherine Lovett, who has worked so hard, who has worked so diligently, who has poured herself in. I mean, if you're on your couch, you all can just give her a hand, put a little, some clapping emojis up there. Um, you know, Catherine Lovett has worked herself I mean she has worked very diligently to make sure that we could have a quality um, social media presence on Instagram and on Facebook um, and she's also working very diligently and she's doing it all to the glory of the Lord and she has worked very diligently and soon very soon in the name of Jesus we are actually going to be able to roll out a website um, because Catherine Lovett has poured herself into that and so I just wanted to honor her right now and thank her for that so y'all put some clapping emojis up there I can't see them right now but I promise I promise you I'll see it later. And so what we see as an interruption might be a divine appointment. 
And I've heard divine appointment many times, and many times when I've heard divine appointment, it means like a divine appointment when you're trying to do outreach, when you're ministering to somebody, when you're reaching out to somebody. And sure enough, this has been that, but I believe it's more so an appointment with the divine, an appointment with divinity. I believe that God is using this to give us an opportunity to have an appointment with him, to meet with him, the author and perfecter of our faith, that we can go deeper in him than we've ever dreamed of being in our lives. He has hit pause on the noise and the chaos and the different things that are going around, and he has said, son, daughter, focus on me. Look to me. Look to me as your source. Look to me as your provider and come and have a relationship with me. And God has hit pause. I want to ask you, during this pandemic, what has gotten your attention? And I'm guilty of this too. Uh, Has Netflix gotten your attention? Has Disney Plus gotten your attention? Has um, social media gotten your attention? Has other things gotten your attention? Or have you given attention? Have video games, Battlefield, you know, Call of Duty, have these things gotten your attention? Or have you given your attention to God? God, I believe, has hit pause. I'm not saying that God has caused this, but I'm saying that the Bible says that God will work together, work all things together for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. I want to ask you right now, are you called according to the purposes of God? And I want to tell you that God taught us to pause. You see, we don't, we don't like to pause in the United States, and I'm going to come back to that. But God taught us to pause. And in Genesis chapter 2, starting in verse 1, it says this, Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creation that he had done. And so God did this incredible thing. God rested, and it was not that God was tired. It was not that God was wore out. I believe God was setting a precedent. God was setting a standard. God was teaching you and I something very special about the importance of resting, about resting. And so there is, there is power in pause, and I hope to draw that out this morning about what God can do when we will pause. Because so often we feel like we've got to put our hands on it. We've got to be productive. I'm somebody that loves to be productive. I love to produce. I love to work. I love to do things. And I, I am not a good, lazy person. I'm, I'm lazy. I'm good at being lazy for about a day. And then I've got to do something. I've got to accomplish something. I'm task and goal oriented and driven. Um, and so I'm not, I don't enjoy just resting. But God says that there is purpose and there is even power in resting. Because when we rest, we take it out of our hands and we put it in his hands. And he is able to do something very special in us when we take the moment to rest. Uh, In Genesis chapter 2, moving to verse 21, God did something really amazing. Look at this. In verse 21, so the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. All right, so when God made woman, man didn't have any part in it. God put the man to sleep. God made the man rest. God put the man on pause, and God made woman. And I don't know about you, I'm thankful God created me. You know, I'm I'm thankful I'm a man. I'm I'm grateful for that. But man, when I look at Jessica, I'm like, thank you, God. Like, you know, God did something when he made man. But when he made woman, man said, whoa, man. Oh, my gosh. I mean, we just got to praise God for that. I mean, he went the extra mile, all right? And so God, man... And man didn't have any part of that. God put man to sleep. God made man rest. All right? So what what does it mean to rest? What does it mean to rest? And something I would love for you to do right now, wherever you're sitting, wherever you're at, um, I would love for you to comment your 
favorite place to take vacation. I know this might sound crazy, but we're not doing church as usual. Everybody's not sitting in here. You're in your living room, your bedroom, wherever you're at right now. And, I'll, and so we're going to communicate through this, all right? That, that comment section, that's our lobby where we would normally fellowship. And so I want to encourage you right now, just drop in the comments, where's your favorite place to take a vacation? Where's your favorite place to go rest? But what does rest really mean? It is good to go and rest. It is good to go to the mountains. It is good to go to the beach and rest our bodies. But I believe God has called us to a deeper place of rest than that. You see, the Sabbath, and God, and as, as you read the Old Testament, you see the Sabbath was a very big deal. It was a day of rest that God had made holy, that God had commanded the children of Israel to observe. But the Sabbath was not about not working. That was a part of it, but the Sabbath was not about not working. The Sabbath was about trusting in God. You see, just like when we give our tithes and our offerings to the Lord, and thank you for those that you have been given, you are keeping this house running, you have been such a blessing, and I want to say to the Faith Chapel family, you have been so generous. Thank you for being faithful during this time. But in tithing, we, we take a step of faith and we say, I'm going to trust that God can do more with 90% of my income than I can do with 100%. I'm going to make an offering. I'm going to make a sacrifice of faith trusting in God. Well, that's what Sabbath is. Sabbath is saying, I believe that God can cause more produce in six days than I can cause it in myself in seven. It is a step of faith. It is an act of faith. And so when we take that rest, God has not caused us to just rest our physical body. You see, you can rest your physical body, but not receive full rest. Because full rest, you are not just flesh and blood. You are body, soul, and spirit. You have a mind, you have emotions, and you have an eternal spirit dwelling on the inside of you that God has placed there. And God has called us to rest completely, not just from work, but to also rest our soul and our spirit. And the only way we truly do that is by resting in him is by coming to a place where we seek him. You see, on the Sabbath day, that's when they would go to the temple and worship. That's when they would go and seek God. That's when they would really focus in on God. That's when mom and dad would tell their kids what happened in the Exodus and how God brought them out of the land of Egypt. That's when they really would focus in on God, and that is what God has called us to do. It is not only to rest our flesh, but to come to a place of resting our soul and our spirit, our mind, our emotions, and our eternal self, to come to a place of rest that he can fully refill us that he can fully fill us with everything that he has for us and so this morning i want to take just a moment if you'll bear with me and i want to introduce you to something that i was taught about a year ago and that is something called the cycle of grace the cycle of grace and this was developed by a psychiatrist dr frank lake and he developed this together with a swiss theologian dr emile brenner and um, this was a very interesting thing. And um, Dr. Frank Lake was in India. And as he was in India, he was able to observe hundreds of English missionaries that had gone to India to take the gospel into India. And what they were seeing was a great amount of burnout. As Almost as soon as the missionaries would get there and hit the mission field, within a couple months, they would burn out and they would lose their zeal. They would lose their drive. They would lose their energy. They would go back to England um, discouraged and just, just downcast and, and just sad. And this was a major problem. And uh, I was blessed to be taught this by a man by the name of Gary Moon. And um, these missionaries, they were burning out so fast. And so uh, Dr. Frank Lake and uh, Dr. Emil Brunner, they began to study what happened in the life of Christ. Because Christ had a physical body just like us. Christ had a soul. He had a, a mind and emotions just like we do. And so Christ faced all the exact same um, drainage that we feel. Yet Christ never burnt out. And it, not only did he, see, he feel the same amount of draw on him, he felt more draw than any of us have ever dreamed of feeling. In his three years of ministry, as you read, he was constantly surrounded by crowds, constantly surrounded by people that desiring something from him or blatantly attacking him. Three years straight, nonstop, constantly healing people, constantly preaching. He had an endless ministry for three years, yet Jesus never burnt out. Jesus never got weary. And I want to tell you, you don't have to be a missionary or a pastor to feel burnout, to feel downcast, to feel, to feel like everything has been drained out of your body and you have nothing left. And so these two began to study what was it about Jesus 
that caused him to never experience burnout. And they developed this thing called the cycle of grace. And so first we're going to look at how we view achievement in the United States. And if we can get that one graphic up, the first one with the X. Yes, thank you. And so in the United States, very often, we want to be accepted. All of us, we want to be accepted. Not just the United States, everywhere. We want to be accepted. And so how do we start to be accepted? First, we need to achieve something. And then when we achieve something, that achievement will give us significance. And then if we can sustain that achievement and that significance, we will be accepted. Because we look at people like LeBron James, we look at, and nothing wrong with him, but we look at these great men, these great women all around the world, and everybody's like, wow! And they're accepted and they're praised and, and it's such a great thing. And that is the way that we look at life. You have, to achieve, you have to achieve something, then you, if you achieve something, then you will be significant. And if you can sustain that achievement, then we will accept you. Then we will accept what you have to say. Then we will say that you are significant, you matter. But first you need to achieve, and then you need to be significant, and then you need to sustain that. But how did Jesus go through life? How did Jesus operate? You see, this is the wrong way to view life. Jesus did not end with acceptance. Jesus started with acceptance. And I want to say wherever you are right now, that God accepts you and God loves you. God cares for you very deeply wherever you're at, wherever you're sitting right now. And Jesus, he started with acceptance. Jesus did not start his earthly ministry until the water baptism. And what happened at the water baptism when he came up out of that water? There was a major moment of God's seal and acceptance on his son. God sent his Holy Spirit to rest on him like a dove. And God audibly from heaven said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus had not raised any from the, anybody from the dead. Jesus had not healed a blind eye. Jesus had not done a single miracle. Jesus, in our view of achievement, had not achieved a single miracle thing except to be obedient in baptism he had achieved nothing he had done nothing great and yet here's the father saying this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased i want you to point at yourself right now wherever you're sitting it might sound crazy but i want you to point at yourself and whether if you are a son or if you were a daughter i want you to say i am a beloved son in whom he is well pleased because your identity in Christ is that just that. You are not founded on your past mistakes or your past successes. You are founded in your relationship with God through Christ. And so our relationship with God has to start with our understanding of his acceptance. And it is his acceptance that sustains us. And it is his acceptance that gives us significance. And it is out of understanding that he accept us, accepts us and then we are sustained and then we understand our significance it is out of the overflow of that that we begin to achieve. You see, God didn't call us to be lazy. He didn't call us to rest seven days a week. He called us to rest one day a week. God said, six days a week, you shall work. He has called us to work. Before God gave man a woman, he gave man a job to tend and take care of the Garden of Eden. And so we are called to be productive, but we are also called to rest. Do not find your significance. Do not find your acceptance. Do not find your value in your ability to achieve and produce. And in the United States, we are looking for the American dream so much. We are striving for the American dream. We want to have, we want to provide the right car. We want to have the right house. We want to have all the gizmos and gadgets. We want to have the great stuff so that we can look like we have achieved something, that we've been successful, that we're not lazy, we're not a bum. We have done the right thing and we have been successful. And yet so many times, there are millionaires that commit suicide. Because they're not fulfilled on the inside. They're not satisfied on the inside. Because we cannot find our fulfillment in the amount of things that we achieve. Your achievements will never fulfill you. Finding acceptance in Jesus Christ and in, the, in God the Father alone is only what will fulfill us. What will make us feel that full acceptance that God sees us and he knows us. He sees the deep dark things that have taken place in our heart and he still says you are my beloved son you are my beloved daughter in whom i am well pleased 
And we strive for these earthly things so hard. We strive to have that house. And this is something that hit me recently. When you have that nice house, what is the priority of heaven? What are the priorities of heaven? I want you to think about that right now. What are the priorities of heaven? Because if you get that really nice house, if you get that really nice car, if you have a top-of-the-notch top house and there's nothing wrong with that, at the end of the day, from an eternal viewpoint, it's still just a pile of sticks, stones, and mud. At the end of the day, it's still a temporary dwelling. It might be built very well and will last 100 years, but it is a temporary dwelling. Yet we strive our entire lives to achieve that temporary dwelling and base our status and our importance on that temporary dwelling instead of understanding that our acceptance and who we are is founded in Christ. And when we can understand that, then we can continue that circle of grace, which involves achievement, which involves accomplishing things. I believe that God has put special things just in you. God has put books in you. God has put inventions in you. God has put business entrepreneurship in you. God has put wisdom in you. God has given you gifts, talents, and abilities that he hasn't given other people. You just got to tap into that. But that is not where we find our acceptance. Our acceptance has to be found in Christ and Christ alone. And that is what sustains us through the great times and the hard times. So what what has God put in your hand? What is God saying to you? And so I want to I take just a moment and read a passage of scripture that shows, so you don't think I'm just talking um, out of my ear, that shows how God, how Jesus operated in the cycle of grace. And so in Mark chapter 1, starting in verse 29, going through verse 39, as soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in the bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening, after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many of those who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons But he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. After that, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they explained, everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. This is just one of many examples that shows how Jesus stayed sustained during his earthly ministry, stayed sustained during his life because Jesus found that special time to go and get alone with God. He found that pause. There is power in pausing. There is power in taking a moment to wait upon the Lord and allow God to fill you. Jesus never poured out something that was not already filled in him. And so many times, and even as pastors, we try to pour out of an empty cup. We try and go to work and pour out of a dry, wore out cup. Because we, are, we might be physically rested but we are spiritually exhausted we are emotionally drained but if we will do what jesus did right here get up and go find solitude with god take that pause and allow him to fill us allow him to fill us with his spirit that we can receive his power that we can receive his word for the day that we can receive what he has for us and then as we go through our day we are sustained we, are, we have found that acceptance. And then during that day, if everything goes awry and we go, it goes so far that we lose our job, we have found that acceptance. Or if everything goes great and we, we get the best sale we've ever had in our life, we achieve the greatest moment of our life, we're not founded in that. We're founded in Christ. We've got to find that pause. There is power in pausing. I want to encourage you today. Have you found a place of pause? Have you found a place of solitude? Have you found a place to just go and rest with the Father? There is a special place for you in the shadow of the Almighty 
where he will fill you up with power. He will fill you up with joy. He will fill you up with acceptance. Don't spend your days on your phone. Don't spend your days on your phone scrolling through social media, scrolling through Instagram, looking, wearing your brain and your eyes out, just looking at things. Don't spend your days in that. Open up the word of God and allow him to fill you with his acceptance, fill you with his word for your life that you can be sustained, that you can be full. Because in that, when we find that, when we get that cycle of grace right, and I want to tell you, there's, there's YouTube videos that teach on the cycle of grace, there's books on it, I barely scratched the surface of the quality teaching that is involved in that. You can go look that up. But when we get that cycle of grace right, there's a balance that takes place. We're not always pouring out of an empty cup. What happens if you have a car and you constantly run it, but you do not maintain it, you do not take care of it, you don't get regular oil changes, you don't change the air filter, you don't put new tires on it, you don't maintenance that vehicle? It will run very well for a season, but eventually it's going to break down. And so many times we run our lives like that. We run full throttle, but then eventually it breaks down. There is power in pause. And what I want to do right now, Jeremy, if you'll come up, is I want to share a scripture with you. And what I would like to do right now is just read that, this scripture over you. I believe that this is going to bless your life. And I want to ask you to just allow this scripture to sweep over you as I read it. Jeremy's going to be playing. And then we're just going to go into a brief time of worship. Thank you for, for remaining with us, those of you that have remained with us. And this is Psalm 46. Psalm 46. And I really wanted to, to read it out of, out of a physical Bible this morning because I, I believe that there is, there is sustenance in this. There is a refreshing in this for our souls, for our spirits. And I'm just going to read, read this over you as Jeremy begins to play slowly. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way, And the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam. And the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at at daybreak. Nations are in upward kingdoms fall he lifts his voice the earth melts the lord almighty is with us the god of jacob is our fortress come and see what the lord has done the desolations he has brought on the earth he makes wars cease to the ends of the earth he breaks the bow and shatters the spear he burns the shields with fire He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. This morning, I want to encourage you to begin to walk with God. The scripture says, now that we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. The only way we do that is by resting in Him. I want to tell you this morning, I believe that God wants to come walk with you. Divinity, the Trinity, wants to come walk with you. He wants to be there next to you day in and day out through trials, tribulations, and successes. He is there. He is our ever-present help in time of need. As we worship this, I want to encourage you to find a place of worship in your home. Whether that's laying on your face, whether that's on your knees, wherever that might be for you. I want to encourage you to find a place of worship. A posture of worship. And allow God to just sweep into that place and know that He is there with you. Whether you feel goosebumps or not. Whether you feel an emotional experience or not. He is there with you. I love you. The Lord bless you and keep you in the name of Jesus. Just find a place of worship as we sing this song. Come walk with me. Speak to my heart.
deep in me only you know come walk with me come walk with me speak to my deep in me only you know come walk with me come walk with me speak to my heart what's deep in me only you know come walk with me come walk with me speak to my in me only you know come walk with me come walk with me speak to my heart it's deep in me only you know come walk with me thank you lord come walk with me come walk with me speak to my heart it's deep in me, only you know, come walk with me, come walk with me, speak to my heart, it's deep in me, only you know, come walk, oh, come walk with me, oh speak to my heart, Jesus. Deep in me, only you know, Jesus. Oh, come walk with me. Come walk with me. Speak to my heart. It was deep in me. Only you know. Come walk with me. Come walk with me. Speak to my heart. Deep in me, only you know. Come walk with me. Come walk with me. Speak to my heart. It's deep in me, only you know. Come walk with me. Come walk with me. Oh, speak to my heart. Deep in me, only you know. Come walk with me. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Guys, keep playing there. Hallelujah. If you'll just sing that softly, Lauren. Hallelujah. Thank God for our praise team. Amen. Thank God that we can rest in the Lord. Thank God that we can pause in the presence of God today. Oh, Pastor Joshua, what a word for today. What an awesome word, son. Just continue to seek the face of God today. Continue to seek the word of the Lord today in your life. Continue to pause today. Don't let things get in your way. Don't let TV, don't let the internet, don't let all the things of this world get in the way of you spending time with God. You want to increase your faith. You want to increase your life. You want to increase your presence in the earth. Do it through God because that's really the only increase we need. It's really the only increase we should desire in our life is the increase of God in our life, the increase of God in our hearts, the increase of Jesus Christ and his mercy and his grace and his love in each and every one of us. God has a plan for you. I want you to know you were born for such a time as this. You are here in this time, in this hour, not to experience destruction and negative things, but to experience the hand of God, to experience the word of God, to experience the life of God, that resurrection life that he promised us. You can experience it today. You can experience it by pausing in his presence. You can experience it by pausing and receiving from the Lord. Let your cup be filled. You know, the Bible refers to us as vessels. And as we pour out as a vessel, God pours into us. As long as we are in his presence, as long as we are seeking his face, as long as we are walking in his way. So I encourage you today to stay in his presence all day long. Stay in his presence.
stay in his presence. Stay in his presence and pause. Pause in the presence of God. Pause in the love of God. Pause and be restored by the hand of God today. Pause in the spirit of God. Take a pause. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay to stop everything and just be in the presence of God. Hallelujah. We worship you today, Father. We thank you, God, for what you're doing in our lives. Father, we thank you that we can just take a moment and rest in you. We rest in you, Lord. We take that sabbatical rest in Jesus today. We rest in you, Lord God. We thank you for your regeneration within our spirits, your regeneration within our lives. We thank you for that circle of grace within us, Lord God, that we that we begin to understand it, we begin to flow in it, we begin to receive it, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that we dwell in your acceptance. We're not looking for the acceptance of man. We're not looking to build our own kingdoms. We're looking to build the kingdom of God. We thank you, God, for your acceptance today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us today. I pray that you've been encouraged. I know I have been. This has been an awesome word and an awesome time of worship and praising God today. Write in the comments a prayer request. We've already gotten a few, which we will continue to be praying. But write in the comments your prayer request or your praise reports. Man, let's give God just as much praise as we do asking of him. Let's give him just as much praise as we do petitioning him so honor God today stay in his presence take that pause you guys have a great day we love you hey have a great day have a God day in Jesus name